So we're going to talk a little bit about new construction and the inventory and what might be happening to prices, at least in my area. Uh, this is Sarasota, Florida, and really I'm talking about our surrounding counties as well. You know, and right now I'm in a new community, new construction community that hasn't opened up yet. So there's a lot of lots here. Uh, they're, they're still all available because the, the sales have not begun. And actually here right behind me uh, are two model homes that they're going to show. This area is called Monterey and it's uh, just off of Fruitville Road east of the interstate. Um, looks beautiful in here and, and quite frankly I mean look at this house. This house looks just amazing. And while new construction homes like these here that are uh, being built out by the Toll Brothers are just beautiful, absolutely beautiful, and most people will would love to live in them, uh, especially you know home buyers that are shopping around. While that's true, I think the real situation we need to talk about is pricing and quantity of competition which we call inventory of homes. So, you know, in the last few years, we've had so many communities like this pop up. Just picture perfect communities. Look at this. Everything is just beautiful. Well, maybe the weather could be a little better today. And all the statistics and data that I'm seeing is showing one thing all the time. Same thing. And that's every single month our inventory is going up. There are more homes for sale, more homes for sale, but somehow the prices are not dropping. How is this even possible? As we have more homes hit the market and then less homes selling every single month, and that is actually both happening. We're having more inventory come on the market as new listings, and then we're having less sales every single month. So naturally, mathematically, that doesn't turn out to be a very good thing over the long run. And it's been going on for well over a year, probably close to a year and a half at this point, especially in our area, Sarasota, but it's actually nationwide. So what are these builders thinking? They're building these beautiful places. Look behind me. This is just so beautiful. But who is buying this stuff? And the real question, is anyone buying this stuff? And the answer is yes. People are buying these new construction homes and they're committing to, you know, a, an eight month construction build and then they purchase it and move in and they love it. And this community is probably going to take a couple years to sell and be completed and then closed out while the builder moves on to the next community. And while the federal government said that we're expected to have some interest rate uh, decreases, great. Listen, we've had nothing but interest rate increases and we went from, from you know, 2.875 all the way to 8% interest rates. And now we're finally back down to the high sixes, low sevens, but we've been told that we're gonna have, you know, possibly, maybe a six rate decreases and while that is excellent news uh, you know pretty much for everyone everyone wants to have lower interest rates and have uh, lower payments on everything while that's true i just don't think it's going to happen and really it's going to be at the cost of something if it does happen cost of inflation so is this a really good thing for the people for interest rates to drop and will inventory actually start coming down? And maybe we'll have a prevention of prices coming down. Just things aren't adding up. Every time I talk to business owners, people are struggling. Every time I talk to independent contractors, they're struggling. Even, you know, builders are struggling. And what about all the suppliers of all the materials? They're not necessarily struggling, but they're not doing as well as they did. And it's no wonder, as we have an uncertain economy and we have rates that are really high, a lot of businesses don't want to go and, and spend money and invest into new ventures. They're just trying to go and survive and do the best they can in this uh, transitory environment. So will it be enough if we actually have our six interest rate decreases? Is that going to be enough? And how much are they going to decrease? You know, if they decrease by half a percentage point, at least twice out of those six, 
that's going to be amazing. That is really, really going to help boost the economy. And like I said, at what cost? Well, it's going to be inflation. It's going to be at the expense of inflation. And I guess we'll see how they manage that. But this is not something that I think is very wise. Um, I think it's probably better to kind of let the economy come back to its own equilibrium naturally instead of boosting this, reducing that, and pushing everything uh, as hard as they do. You know, in about two weeks, I'm going to be doing a recap video uh, after the new statistics come out for our local area on how many homes are actually selling and go over month over month. I'm going to make a chart so people can really see how much it's changing and how it's going down and the number of sales are going down. And then I'm going to pop in the same thing for the median price and see what's happening. And then the same thing for inventory because we want to know how many homes are we going to be competing with. So let me talk to you sellers for just a moment because I talk to a lot of sellers. As a real estate agent, I prospect for, for sale by owners and expired listings. And one thing that always happens with for sale by owners and expireds are that they are overpriced. They think the price is still high. They think the demand is pretty good. The demand is very low right now. So it's not as bad as it could be. It could be a lot worse than this, but it's not looking too good. So when you're thinking about selling, there's absolutely no point in testing the market. People do this. People list it and they try to test the market and they're like, oh, well, if I get my number, then I'm happy. Well, yeah, sure. If I get my number for my house, I'd be happy too. But I'm not selling because this is not the right environment to sell, in my opinion, unless you have, this is not a time to go and test things out. You know, if you have to move or you really, really want to, great, go and do it, okay? I'm not saying this, this is a horrible time to sell. I'm just saying it's not like 2021 where you list it and you're going to get multiple offer scenarios. The only way to do that, and this is a strategy um, to get multiple offers, is to lower the price by about 15% from what the past sales are showing in the last three months. So sellers, you want to get multiple offers? You can do it. I got a buddy, Dave. He has numerous properties listed and they always get multiple offers because he deals with investors. And these investors know that if you need to sell for whatever reason, drop the price, make it really attractive right from day one, get multiple offers, take the cash buyer and close quick. And, and there is really good news. No matter what time of year, what's going on in the economy, there's always buyers out there. You know, even in 2009 and 10 and 11, there were so many homes for sale, most of them foreclosures. And guess what? They all sold. Now, yeah, you have to be priced right. And even if your property is completely trashed, it's still going to sell. I looked at so many listings during that time because I was working with investors, buying up a lot of properties. And look, some of them had fire damage, some of them were absolutely trashed, and some of them had grow operations going on inside, and obviously drug dealing because they were manufacturing as well. And everything sells, okay? Everything sells. It's, everything has a price when it comes to real estate. So don't worry on if you can sell. If you have to sell, you'll be able to sell. But when I go on listing appointments, the conversation isn't necessarily you know, will you sell at your price within 30 or 90 days? The conversation is, you want it to sell? Here's the price that you should list at. You want it to sit? Here's the price that you should list at. You want to get multiple offers? Here's the price that you should list at. And the truth of the matter is, we're going to sell it. Now, buyers, let me talk to you for just a moment, and then we'll wrap this video up. If you're a buyer, and you are thinking that prices are going to come down a whole bunch, so I'm going to wait. Listen, you're gambling. You're rolling the dice. If you're like living at your mom's, you know, garage or something, and you're sick and tired of it, just buy. There's no point in waiting. There, there really is no point in waiting. You're gambling that the prices are going to come down because inventory keeps going up. And look, I'm telling, telling you, and I'm showing you right behind me, there's all these new construction homes that are going to come up here. There's lots of inventory hitting the market. They're not selling as fast. Look, I am not hiding the fact that we might have prices come down. 
I think we will have prices come down, but I am no oracle of real estate. You have to make the decision for yourself on whether or not you want to take that gamble because you can always refinance in the future once rates come down as long as prices haven't crashed. That's a good conversation to have if you're not sure what I mean by that. It's all about the appraised value and uh, your debt to income ratio. But at the end of the day, don't wait. Just make a move. Just buy something. Because the saying in real estate isn't wait to buy real estate. No, the saying is don't wait to buy real estate. Buy real estate and wait. That's really the best strategy that you can take to make sure to make some money and also have a house for yourself. Get a rental or two or 10 or 20. You know, don't wait. The tenants are going to be the ones paying the mortgage off nice and slow. 30 years slow. That's how slow actually. So don't wait. Just buy it. Make sure that you can cover your nut with the rental amount and make sure you have a little bit of money saved up. And if it's just your primary residence, don't try to figure out when is the bottom. You'll never time the bottom. Tell me a time that you bought a stock and you timed the perfect bottom. The probability of that is so low. So just don't try to do it, okay? Just get off your horse and make an offer if you need to move you will not regret it in the long run. You might have a little bit of uncertainty in the short run because I don't think we're going to have certainty anytime real soon. But probably within three, four years, we'll start getting a lot more certain. And guess what? When everyone feels certain, everyone goes out and buys. So beat them to it. Okay, do it before they do it. I'll tell you, as an investor, I am always looking at properties to buy. I am writing offers all the time, maybe not every week, but you know, every two weeks, I'm writing an offer for something. And sure, I don't get them all accepted. That's fine. That's not no problem at all. It's a, it's a numbers game. And crunching the rental numbers is a numbers game too, you know? So just do something because if you wait to buy real estate, I pretty much guarantee most of you will regret it. You know, there's one thing I just wanted to add here, and it's about these new construction communities, like the one I'm walking through right now, Monterey. And let me tell you something. Just a couple of years ago, we had this crazy, crazy situation where you would go to a new construction community. The doors open. Let's just say it's day number one of sales, and it's a Monday, and they've already had all these properties bought. They just opened. No one has gone through the door yet. But you know, people know people. It's about who you know. And things got locked up. And then they were like, oh yeah, we're gonna build you know, 250 homes here and it's gonna be wonderful, blah, 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 sales pitch. But then they only release, you know, like three a month because they can't keep up to build them so fast. So they can only allocate a certain amount per month, you know? And we had this situation of no inventory. And right now, we are in that opposite part where we have a lot of inventory hitting the market. Now, obviously, resales, they could just come up tomorrow. The new construction, there's a lot of planning with that. And the permits are still being pulled for new construction starts. They are still going and planning to build so many communities. And just in my little area, there are over 20 new construction communities going up still. I don't see the demand here for it, but you know, they're gonna sell. And what they do, the new construction, what they do, yeah, they're really good. Sometimes what they do is they pre-sell some of it to investors just to help, you know, make the money and help cover the, the expense of um, building all of this out. And then they also sometimes come in and they team up with a lender, their in-house lender. But it's a really big company that what they do is they'll pay a certain dollar amount, a lot of money, by the way, there's hundreds of thousands of dollars in buying down the interest rates for all the people here ahead of time that are gonna be buying here. So as an example, Let's just say that, you know, right now our interest rates are what, like 6.75%, right? And they say, okay, we want to offer in our advertising 4.99%. And we want, you know, about 50% of the lots here to go through financing and uh, be take advantage of this uh, offer of this 4.99%. So they're going to go and team up with a lender and say, hey, lender, here you go. Here's like $350,000 
for locking in that interest rate today, regardless of what happens in the future. If interest rates go up, great, the builder won. If interest rates went down, great, the lender won. So, they, so builders have this advantage that regular homeowners don't necessarily have, and it might cost the regular homeowners too much money, but it's just bundled into the profit margin of these builders. So the builders can buy out a low interest rate for all the buyers and compete with the regular home sellers, you know? And let's just say, interest rates just come back up a little bit and they, they're at that seven and a half by the time they start selling these properties. You know, all the people out there owning homes that are trying to sell it for sale by owner or, or expired listings or whatever, just regular listings, they're competing with that 4.99%. So there's, you know, $600,000 home is competing with the same payment for something that might be a, a, a $750,000 home. I didn't do the math on that. Don't, don't fact check me on that, but you know, th this is what they have to compete with. So as a seller, you, you really have a big, big disadvantage when there are so many communities going up and being built. And also the insurance cost is so much lower on these new construction homes. So you, you really have a double disadvantage. And then the third disadvantage is that you as a seller, you can't compete with the latest and greatest and the brand new, you know that fresh car smell when you, when you open the door of a brand new car before it's even been driven? Houses have that too. You got the fresh house smell. And just knowing that no one has, has used this home before, it is brand new. It's just a good feeling, you know? You go get your insurance rate, you're getting all the discounts that you could possibly get for that house because they're, they're meeting all the building codes, you know? So older homes, they're really competing against something that is hard to compete with. And that's why these new construction communities are going up. They keep selling. They can offer so many more things that old uh, homes cannot. And these old homes, they don't even have to be old. They could be 20 years old. They could be built in the year 2000, you know, and they're beautiful homes, but they can't compete with interest rate. They can't compete with brand new. They can't even compete with the insurance rates being so much lower. All right, that's what I think. What do you think?